This week on Access Virginia Beach, Council takes a retreat to plot the city's course for the next six months. See what they discussed. And a new trail and walkway comes to completion. See how this opens up the city to bikers and pedestrians. Plus, see how one group helps take education beyond the walls of the classroom. We'll have that and more on this edition of Access Virginia Beach. Hello and welcome to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, a program that informs you of news and events from around our city and schools. I'm Mickey Aceto. Thanks for joining us. Several times a year, City Council gets away from the formality of their meeting room for a leisurely discussion of some of the items facing them. Leisurely, that is, until you start adding up discussions about an animal shelter, LED lights, strategic growth areas, employee pensions, and Oh yes, a tight economy. City Council members spent an early spring day in a biannual retreat. Here, the group reviews its goals from the past year and plots a course for the next six months. So it's everything from the um, the small details, to that, uh, the small details regarding the services we provide to our citizens, as well as the big 30,000 foot view services that we provide also on a daily and annual basis. We've been talking about a lot about economic development. Uh, and that, you know, we're looking for revenues for the city, you know, during these tough economic times, um, you know, finding revenues is tough. But I think the council really feels strongly that we must do everything we can to bring new businesses to our city and expand our tax base. First and foremost was the issue of upcoming budget discussions and how to fill a shortfall that could reach $111 million for city and schools. We're going into a very, very you know, tough and challenging budget process, so it's, it's always a good idea to have as much information on the table as we can. Finding alternatives to increasing your taxes, increasing your fees, we've, we've worked on uh, finding solutions to that. So hopefully this year folks won't see an increase on their taxes or fees. Council now begins a month-long deliberation on the proposed spending plan. In 2008, teens accounted for 17 percent of all drivers involved in drunk driving crashes. In 2007, underage drinkers were responsible for 14 percent of drunk driving deaths. Preventing tragedies like these is one reason that the Virginia Beach Youth and Community Action Team is hosting a town hall meeting. On Thursday, April 15th, parents, teachers, and community members are invited to attend a town hall meeting on underage drinking. A variety of speakers will be on hand to talk about energy drinks, alcohol abuse, and the legal issues associated with underage drinking. The event will be held at Cox High School and is free and open to the public. Call 385-0820 for more information. When people mention the boardwalk, Virginia Beach residents most likely think of the one that graces our seaside community. But there is another one about a block west of that that is causing some excitement. Is this another great day in Virginia Beach? <laughs> Mayor Sessoms led the cheers as the South Beach Trail boardwalk was opened recently. The 1,400-foot boardwalk strolls along Lake Holly from 5th Street to Norfolk Avenue. The new path will give walkers, joggers, and bikers a picturesque trail where they won't have to compete with traffic along Pacific Avenue. Numerous studies show that uh, investments by uh, the state, uh, city, state, and federal governments uh, in facilities like this, the, the return in terms of getting people out, more people out, biking and walking, uh, at meeting what the recommended average daily levels of exercise are go up very dramatically when people have access to something like this. The Boardwalk Trail offers state-of-the-art LED lighting that's energy efficient and low maintenance. And a gazebo halfway down the path provides shade and rest for travelers or fishermen. The project cost about $1.1 million. Most of that money, nearly $800,000, came from a federal grant. The trail connects an eight-mile loop from Pacific Avenue down General Booth Boulevard to Bird Neck Road to, and to Norfolk Avenue. The loop will be complete once Bird Neck Road construction is finished, and this will connect the oceanfront with the aquarium, the Owl Creek Municipal Tennis Center, the Owl Creek Golf Course, and the SeaTac Recreation Center. 
Well, it's that time of year again. The tourists are coming back to the beach, and now is your chance to check them out in their natural habitat. We're talking about dolphin watching, of course. Here's Stephanie Sutton. Well, this is the Virginia Aquarium Rooting Tours Dolphin Watch. We take people out and try to educate them about the dolphins out in the wild. It takes about 1 20th of a second for them to be able to take a breath. It's that They're time of year awesome. again, dolphin watching season. Catch an up-close encounter with Atlantic bottlenose dolphins in their natural habitat. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to be able to see these animals, so we tell them about their habits, or what they feed on, the size that they get, why they're in this area during this time of year, and different items about the, just the general behavior of the bottlenose dolphin. The Virginia Aquarium hosts the 90-minute coastal adventure, which is fun and educational for children and adults. I hope that they learn a little bit more about the marine environment um, and some of the um, fun things about the dolphins and some of the maybe the sadder things about the dolphins so that they can help make the um, marine life a little happier. These guys are common visitors to Virginia Beach, but the best time to spot them is during the summer months. We don't anticipate dolphins here year round. Um, normally we see them from about May through October. However, the past few years we have had a few show up on our well watch trips. <laughs> They also get one set of teeth. Volunteers from the aquarium are also on board, giving various demonstrations. But the best part? The dolphin sightings, of course. It was awesome. This is my second time on it, and it was amazing. Tons of dolphins. Sound like fun? Well, you can purchase tickets here at the Virginia Beach Fishing Center, at the aquarium, or by calling 385-0317. Reporting for VBTV, I'm Stephanie Sutton. Trips run now through October. They leave from the Virginia Beach Fishing Center at Rudy Inlet. For times and ticket prices, log on to virginiaaquarium.com. Now, this next group might not be seeing dolphins, but they are having fun with a few other senses. What's special about this lesson is that the students have low to no vision. We have our blind and low vision support group. It's called Seeing Beyond and the group comes, about 40 people come once a month for a special program. It's a chance to get together with others who are dealing with similar challenges in their life. At this meeting was also an opportunity to enjoy the beauty of plants. These plants mostly are uh, tactile. There is a texture to the plants, either a waxy substance leaf or a fuzzy leaf or a frilly, fluffy leaf and it also smells wonderful. So we're attacking the other senses rather than just uh, their eyes. And it's events like these that help remind some that a physical disability doesn't mean you can't enjoy life. You know, I guess sometimes when you get a disability, you feel like you stop living, uh, you stop going places, you stop doing things. And um, when you come to the library, you know, they take us to the museum, uh, you know, you learn about books, you know, you meet people and, you know, you find out that uh, people with disabilities can still go bowling, uh, still go out and, you know, have entertainment, still play games. You know, you're not stuck behind four walls. The Bayside Special Services Library hosts the Seeing Beyond programs once a month. Contact the Bayside Library at 385-2680 for more information. Coming up next on VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, warmer weather brings outdoor fun and some pesky critters too. We'll tell you what the city is doing to take the buzzing out of your ears. Plus, we'll show you an easy and fun way to get back to nature. That and more are coming up next. Step behind the doors and gates of Virginia's most beautiful homes and gardens during Historic Garden Week in Virginia. Discover creative ideas in interior and garden design in more than 30 tours statewide. Sponsored by the Garden Club of Virginia. Historic Garden Week, April 17th through 25th. Visit vagardenweek.org for more information. 
It takes desire, ability, and opportunity for a criminal to take advantage of you. Eliminating the opportunity is your first step toward protecting yourself. Every day, millions of people just like you leave their homes. Burglars count on this so they can make a living out of your hard-earned property. You can avoid becoming a victim by taking a few simple precautions. Before you exit your residence, do a quick security assessment of your home. Check that all windows are closed and latched, especially the ones in the back. Also, make sure to lock all your rear and side doors. Don't forget the entry door from the garage. If you have a burglar alarm, arm it before you leave. Lastly, don't waste your efforts by leaving an extra key outside where someone can find it. By taking these precautions, we can make sure this guy has a bad work day. Above all, be alert. Protect yourself. Don't give crime a chance. This tip is brought to you by the Virginia Beach Police Department's Crime Prevention Unit. Hi, and welcome back to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach. I'm Vicki Sato. Well, through all its growth, paving, and building, the city of Virginia Beach has still managed to maintain the greenery about the city. So much so that for the 30th year in a row, Virginia Beach has been named a Tree City USA community. Tree cities are recognized for their community forestry programs, tree care ordinances, and their observance of Arbor Day. Virginia Beach holds the second longest tenure as a tree city in Virginia. The city manager just proposed a budget of nearly $1.6 billion to city council. It's been stretched thin in what's been called some of the tightest economic times in years. But thanks to a staff of about 18,000 volunteers, the city is able to save about $18 million annually. Here's just one of those volunteers telling why she offers her time to the city. Hello, I'm Billy Paris. I'm a volunteer with the Master Gardener Program of Virginia Beach. This is a row of purple turnips, and I'm thinning them because they're, uh, when you put the seed in, they end up a little too crowded, so you want to thin them out. I'm helping maintain our demonstration vegetable garden. This is a master gardener project here at Farmer's Market, and we are growing vegetables of all kinds, shapes, and varieties to show the public how easy it is to grow. The Master Gardeners are volunteers in agricultural um, programs. We have about 24 programs here in the city, and we volunteer over 22,000 hours in these projects, and we have contacts with over 31,000 Virginia Beach residents and visitors. I enjoy showing people how easy it is to grow things, and the fact that the vegetables when we grow them ourselves, we know where they come from. We know how healthy they are. I feel like I'm giving back to the community and I'm giving back in a way that um, I know they're getting accurate information. And we're gonna hope we can drive this. And we have projects ranging from um, Arboretum um, to some of the historic houses. We have gardens at some of the historic houses and um, vegetable, the vegetable garden here, herb garden, annuals, Perennials, the compost bins are, are quite a fascination. And um, we just try to, to hit every need of the community. All volunteer, and we have a great time. If the volunteer community is not there, we might lose very important programs that help all of our, our citizens. Virginia Beach volunteers save the, save the city an equivalent of more than 500 full-time employees. Call the volunteer office at 385-4777 to find out how you can make a difference in Virginia Beach. Well, the summer brings warm weather, fun in the sun, and mosquitoes. But the City Department of Public Works is out and about to help make sure your time outside isn't being spent as mosquito bait. Access reporter Veronica Coleman has the story. Every week, city employees start their day by setting traps, taking blood, she's number 52, and checking samples to help protect the citizens of Virginia Beach. We've been testing chickens, sentinel chickens and mosquitoes for about 10 years now for the presence of eastern equine encephalitis and West Nile virus. These viruses can damage the central nervous system in animals and in rare cases humans, which is why one group of employees from the Department of Public Works focuses on mosquito studies. 
They use an early warning system, chickens, to check for the disease. Chickens are very good sentinel animals. They're out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they do get exposed to many, many mosquito bites. And so we very often, sometime during the season, find at least one chicken positive for eastern equine encephalitis. They also capture and test mosquitoes. And while they're rarely spread to humans, it's worth taking precautions against mosquito-borne diseases like West Nile virus and eastern equine encephalitis. We want to make sure that um, people are not out getting ex excessive mosquito bites. Um, it, it is rare in the fact that since 1975, we have only had five deaths in the entire state of Virginia. Horses, it's much more prevalent. Um, that's where people need to be aware of what's going on in the community since we have a very large horse population in Virginia Beach. And for the city, protecting the human and animal population is a year-round effort. During the winter time, what our guys do is we have a inventory of ditches, about 1,500 ditches throughout the city that we must clean and re regrade. And it takes four to five years to get to all the ditches. But the fact of the matter is the more standing water you can make move or eliminate, the more mosquitoes you have uh, denied access to for breeding. That's the most permanent way to do mosquito control. Not, no chemicals involved at all. As temperatures move up, the Mosquito Control Bureau uses a different approach. We have guys that go out in the various area, which they do the larva siding, and that takes place as they spray of chemicals in the standing water. They're in ditches in the fields that, that may be holding water. The goal is to prevent mosquitoes from even making it to the adult be, stage. Right. But there's no way to eliminate every larvae. But there is a last resort. The last ditch effort to control mosquitoes is adult deciding, where our trucks go out at night, uh, truck, we send trucks out to neighborhoods where we know mosquitoes or adult mosquitoes are being a problem and uh, disperse a pesticide to kill the mos adult mosquitoes. The Mosquito Control Bureau says you can help reduce infestations by eliminating standing water in your yard. Even a glass of water can serve as a breeding ground. But if things get too bad, you can call the Mosquito Control Hotline to request a spraying. For VBTV, I'm Veronica Coleman. For more information on mosquito spray routes, call the Mosquito Control Hotline at 385-1590. Or you can log on to vbgov.com to request the service for your area. One of the best ways to learn something is by experiencing it firsthand. So when the students in this next story were trying to grasp the concepts of conservation and the ecosystem, the obvious solution was to see Mother Nature in action. This isn't your average field trip. Oh, now these are neat. Look at these tracks. Any idea it's not a snake. These third graders from SeaTac <laughs> Elementary are spending the day at False Cape Park. And acorns are a survival food. Who eats acorns? Uh, squirrels. squirrels. State budget cuts threaten to close the park, a prospect that wasn't acceptable to these nature lovers. We're here because we thought that the governor was going to close False Cape. The children were up in arms and upset, and we had some good news. They're not closing False Cape, so they wanted to see actually what False Cape's all about, what it looks like, and all about the environment. After hearing the good news, the students wanted to experience the outdoors firsthand and do a little research for themselves. And we have, who do we have? Hoofs or paws? Hoofs. The young environmentalists took notes, pictures, and video of the park. The children are actually getting hands-on research. They're using flip cameras, they're taking field notes, and they're really identifying different species that they really haven't had exposure to. So they're getting a hands-on, upfront look at nature. So what did they find? We found deer tracks, hog tracks, and bird tracks so far. And we're, wondering, and we're still wondering what else we can find. I was recording most of the animal tracks and like these different type of leaves on these trees with the fandexes. The students will use information they gathered to create multimedia presentations. The secluded location of False Cape Park is the perfect place to experience nature in its truest form. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yourself, take a look at what you can expect. The park itself, it's a barrier spit. It's about a mile wide, 4,321 acres, six miles long. And in that mile width, there's marshes, 
maritime forests, dunes, beach, and it backs up to North Carolina, the southern border, Back Bay National Wildlife Refuge to the north, Back Bay on the west, and the ocean on the east. So it's a little, it's a barrier spit, not an island, water only on two sides, but it actually is the beginning of the Outer Banks. And it's open to the public. The park opens on a daily basis after Memorial Day, but until then, you can visit Falls Cape on the weekends. There are several nature programs, and they even have a tram that will bring you right into all the action. For more information and activities, log on to www.bbrf.org. The Virginia Beach Schools Education Foundation works to offer learning opportunities for students by offering grant money to teachers who create inspiring lessons. One such activity is highlighted in this next video. Virginia Beach Education Foundation, through donations and public support, provides funding to inspire teachers who innovate exciting learning opportunities for students. There's a lot of teachers out there with great ideas and can't pay, you know, can't pay for them. I mean, it's, it's money that's there and they love giving it out. You need to hear about it. Um, it's, it's just a great community project and the kids find out what it's all about and they buy into it. Um, they love being outside. You're right in the middle of nature, looking at oysters where they live, all around them. It's just awesome. It's great. Great day. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation takes data from anyone that partakes in this project and they collect it and they share it nationally. So we can actually see trends with what's going on with the oysters in Delaware and Maryland and, and all over the place. Teams, the water quality, water chemistry, one of you there, one of you right about us. I pick up the oysters in August and I put them in the float before they ever start back to school. And then we monitor their growth and their development and we come out here and do what you see them doing today and we just analyze things and try to make some predictions and make some hypotheses and see what, what happens. We, when the oysters are big enough in May, we actually take them out of the floats, we deliver them to one of the um, oyster reefs that have been built, like Broad Bay or Lincoln Bay or somewhere like that, and we actually put them on that oyster reef. And they can grow and continue to flourish, and they're big enough and hardy enough that they'll survive better than if we had tried to do it when they were, when we got them, they were about as big as your fingernail. Just tiny little things, and they're very vulnerable. So when we put them in these mesh bags, crabs and things like that can't get to them as easily. So they have a better head start, we give them a head start. And then in May, we deposit them on a reef, and then I pick up new baby spat in August, and we start all over again. It's better than just like reading the book, because like you're actually participating in everything, and like you're actually understanding it more. Intrinsically, they really have a feel for science. They do inquiry, they do field science. It's, it's site-based science, it's actual science. So they feel like they're really scientists. Uh, extra, the other thing that they do is a lot of graphing, a lot of looking at relationships, predicting what might happen, what might have an effect on their growth, what might happen when the temperature is lower, and then when they graph all the data that we get throughout the year, because we get four sets of data a year. I bring them one from August, they get two, one each for the group, and then I get them another one in May. If we're fortunate enough, we try to go on the boat trip with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, which is really awesome because they take them out on the bay. They do the same test that we do, but they do it with more elaborate equipment, but they get the same results, which is really kind of interesting for the children. For the last three years, they have helped us fund the project, um, replacing consumables like the testing kits, buying the oyster spat, helping us buy the floats to put them in when they finally, they last for about three or four years, and just kind of giving them what they need, to, the tools to do the work that they can do. For me, it means a lot because I paid for it myself for four years and I just got to the point where I really couldn't do that anymore. So it was either going to be scaled way down or it was going to be fined a grant. Unfortunately, I've been able to do that for the last three years and that's been awesome. Is that you have a predator well, walking actually, around, it's a shrimp. If you want you to see it? Okay. This is our ecosystem. This is our environment. We need to keep it clean and keep it really good. So when I get parent volunteers that come out, they usually call me back and say, I didn't have any idea about all this stuff. So it makes them better caretakers. And then it goes on because the years after that, they'll follow the news, they'll hear about it, and they'll say, Mom, we did that. We were out there doing the oysters with Miss Kelly. You know, they really enjoy that. So it, they buy into taking care of their environment, learning about their ecosystem, you know, learning about this estuary, learning about the things that are around them. And some, some of them have never even been in the museum. So for them to just walk through the museum and see all the animals, and then when I walk them through the nature trail, I tell them about different things like the natural cycle and decomposers that they see and stuff like that. So just being on the dock for the oysters is not all we do. We make it a, a really big experience. So that funding got us into the aquarium, you know, got us into the aquarium on the dock. Then other people kind of helped out in doing other things and parents coming along. It makes it a project I think they take with them for life. I don't think they ever stop thinking about oysters. So that's a good thing. Inspire teachers create lifelong learners. Support a lifelong learner in your community. Visit vbef.org for more information. 
You can find out more about opportunities like these and the Education Foundation by logging on to vbef.org. One of the school division's strategic goals is to create students who are globally aware. That involves not only an understanding and respect for other cultures, but considerations of those with their own personal challenges as well. Meet the Salem Elementary School Peer Buddies, a group of regular ed and special education autistic students who get together once a week for a little peer-to-peer -peer fun. The main goal of the program really is to put our regular ed kids and special ed kids, especially in the CISA program, to not only first to be aware of, you know, of each other, of the differences, you know, celebrate that diversity, whatever that is, and, and learn from each other. The special education students are usually in a self-contained classroom, but the hope is that sharing weekly experiences with regular education students will create more interaction and acceptance between the youngsters. I made up a PowerPoint telling them that, you know, this is how autistic kids do, this is how they think, this is how their brains work. It's not a matter of they're crazy or whatever, but they're just wired differently, they think differently, they do things differently, but everything they do has a reason. And that's, if we understand what they do, then we'll be able to relate to them more, teach them more, and be, you know, be a friend. The group uses interactive and hands-on activities to relate to each other and it seems to be working. One thing that's fun, um, you get to do a lot of things with the peer buddy that normally you wouldn't have to do. Um, I get the opportunity to serve and do um, what I like to do and help autistic kids. The peer buddies meet for an hour each week during the school year. And just a quick note, April is Autism Awareness Month. Autism is a neurological disorder that impacts normal functioning of the brain in the areas of social interaction and communication. And with that, we've come to the end of our show. But if you've missed something or would like to see it again, you can view this program online. Log on to vbgov.com slash eStream, then find and click on Access Virginia Beach. For everyone here at VBTV, I'm Mickey Sato. Thanks for watching.